Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense. Hope that you're doing well. So believe it or not, sometimes what's really popular in the fragrance community is not what's actually selling the best. No, no, it's really hard to wrap your head around that. <laughs> what? So today what we're doing is we're taking a look at the 10 most popular fragrances ever, according to how you guys have voted on Fragrantica and comparing that to what the best sellers are in retail stores, like the actual best sellers. And we're gonna do a little contrast and compare and see how they differ and they do differ. So let's jump into it. Now, like I said, I'm using the top 10 most popular men's fragrances as of this video, according to Fragrantica, and those can change depending on how much and how often people vote and what they vote for and all that stuff. You know what I'm talking about. You go on the website and you're like, I own it. I love it. I hate it. Mm. That stuff. And we're comparing it to the best sellers on Macy's, Macy's.com, because it's the biggest fragrance retailer in the US, at least uh, as far as I'm aware it is. Now, of course, we could also compare it to like Sephora and Ulta and Saks Fifth Avenue and all kinds of stuff like that. But then it gets really complex. So for simplicity's sake, Macy's Fragantica. Oh, and one thing I will say really quickly, uh, a while back I went over some of the best sellers on the market where I did look at multiple stores, retail stores and sort by best sellers and figure out what was selling really well. And <laughs> I got a comment from somebody who was like, yeah, Dior Sauvage, I'm pretty sure that's actually not a best seller because I hate it. And when I smell it, it makes me nauseous. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure it's not a best seller. Like, oh, cool, man. Uh, all right, enough blibbering and blabbering. <laughs> Let's jump into it. Number 10 on Fragrantica is Prada Lome. Now, Prada Lome is a fragrance that I really love. I love the whole line. Well, for the most part, anyway. And uh, I really like what they do with the iris there. It's nice, soapy, clean, powdery, fresh, easy to wear. You know, you can wear it in more formal situations, more casual situations, lots of versatility. So I really like that fragrance a lot, uh, but it's not in the best sellers. It's not on the first page of results on Macy's. Let's go to the second page. I'm sure it'll be there. It is. Uh, no, that's a sponsored post. Never mind. What I said about the sponsored post, if you go to Macy's, you sort by best sellers, you'll see listings for fragrances and just underneath it, it'll say sponsored, sponsored, sponsored. Those don't count because the brand is paying to have that fragrance put into the search results. And so when you sort by best selling, that doesn't count. So Prada Lome is on the third page on Macy's as far as best sellers. That's not good. So unfortunately, Prada Lome, you know, is held up to here in the fragrance community, but then the normal average people that are buying fragrances at retail, they got it down here somewhere. So what is the actual number 10 best seller on Macy's? Just regular old Dolce & Gabbana light blue for home. Not light blue forever, not light blue oh intense, just regular old light blue, which for me personally is worse than oh intense, worse than light blue forever, but that's what's selling. Now, another quick caveat uh, with the top tens on Macy's, they break it out really weird. If you look at the best sellers on their website, you'll see what I'm talking about. They'll have like Sauvage, 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 Blue de Chanel, Blue de Chanel, Blue de Chanel, Blue de Chanel. So when I reached a, a fragrance from a line, okay, so like I reached one of the Y's or one of the Blue de Chanel's, I cut it off. I'm not gonna have like, oh, the number one best seller is Blue de Chanel Eau de Parfum, the number two best seller is Blue de Chanel Eau de Toilette, the number three best seller is Blue de Chanel Parfum. That's not what the actual top three were, but I'm saying I'm not going to have, you know, 70% of the top 10 be Bleu de Chanel and Sauvage Flankers. Number nine on Fragrantica, Terre d'Hermes. Another fragrance I think is fantastic. Absolute modern classic masterpiece fragrance. Some people don't like the earthy orange in there. I do. And I'm a big sucker for vetiver. I think Terre d'Hermes friggin' rules. Now, Terre d'Hermes... How does, how does that sell on Macy's? We're on page two, nothing. On to page three. Actually, heck with that, I'm gonna show 120 per page. It'll help this go faster. So it is on the third page if you 
expand out to 120 fragrances per page. So what is currently outselling uh, good old Terre d'Hermes, Cool Water, uh, Spice Bomb, Night Vision, Eau de Parfum, Polo Blue, the original Eau de Toilette, 212 by Carolina Herrera, all of this outselling Terre d'Hermes. So what is the actual number nine on Macy's currently? It's Luna Rosa Ocean from Prada. So Prada's new blue fragrance, which I actually do like. I think it's really well done. It's not hyper unique or anything, but it smells really pleasant and for what it's made to do, it does it well. On to number eight, Fragrantica Encre Noir from Lalique. And that's another one I love. Yeah. Encre Noir is best known for being one of the better cheapies that you can buy. It's another vetiver forward fragrance. It's dark, it's rooty. There's cashmere in there as well. Under 30 bucks for a 100 mil size bottle at discounters and a 50 mil size bottle, which frankly looks a little weird, but 50 mil size bottle you can get for about $23 or so. The actual number eight is Gucci Guilty at Macy's. And that's the original Eau de Toilette version. Talked about this before, but Gucci Guilty, even though it's hated by the community, it's loved by normal people. And there's nothing wrong with that, but a lot of people I think would be surprised by how well Gucci Guilty still does in terms of sales. Number seven on Fragrantica, Eros. Yeah, Eros Eau de Toilette, the most popular of the Versace fragrances. Big time compliment puller, loud, sweet. A lot of people know it for being a clubbing type fragrance, night out type fragrance. Uh, as far as me personally, I think Eros Eau de Toilette's probably my least favorite of the line. You know, I'd reach for Eros Flame, Eros Eau de Parfum, and Eros Parfum over the original, but I get the appeal and I wore it a good amount when it was new, so. Can't hate on it. Number seven at Macy's, Ralph's Club from Ralph Lauren. That's another one that I, I grew to love, grew to really enjoy, I should say, very quickly. It's got some similarities to stuff like Y Eau de Parfum. So it's not a surprise to see it selling really well because it is that type of scent. Just the easy to wear, hyper versatility, big time compliment factor, great performance kind of fragrance. You know, that, that jack of all trades, Swiss Army knife type of scent. Number six on Fragrantica, Dior Homme Intense. Oh, I love it. Mm. I love you, Dior Homme Intense. Yeah, I've, I've talked about this fragrance a whole lot. I really, really like it. It's it's right over my shoulder here and I'm, I'm half tempted to just grab it and spray it on because I'm not wearing anything yet. Great iris fragrance. Uh, some people would say makeup-y iris, lipsticky iris. That's how it's been described 52 million times. It's a great, sweet, warm, creamy iris with a, a bit of a woodiness in the base. And then you have an ambrette note that really accentuates uh, the whole composition. Fantastic. So what is the actual number six at Macy's? It's 1 million. Just 1 million, the Eau de Toilette. Yeah, I was actually kind of surprised on that myself. Like I know that 1 million still does well, but I didn't know it still did that well, which maybe I should have known that because I did the video on bestsellers not that long ago, but it surprised me again. Sweet spices with cinnamon playing a prominent note, warmth and resins. It's a fragrance with fantastic performance. One of those ones kind of like Eros that has been pigeonholed as like a clubbing fragrance, but you can wear that just about anywhere, especially in, in cool weather. Number five, La Nuit de Lume is the choice on Fragrantica. Now that one was always pretty popular, but it really had a peak uh, back when uh, Jeremy was really, you know, getting behind it back a number of years ago, Jeremy Fragrance, of course, and that helped take it to the next level. Not that it wasn't popular before, because it was, but that just kind of boosted it. And I, I really love Lana Weed Alone. I think that opening is so attention grabbing, smells fantastic. The cardamom, the way it's used in there, became like the de facto cardamom fragrance for so many people. Number five at Macy's, Aqua de Jo, the original. No profumo, no profundo, no absolute, just good old I want it all. Fragrance of choice for literally everybody that was around when it came out and then they got compliments and they just kept buying it for decades. Now I'm not hating on Aqua de Jo uh, because I was one of the people that wore that fragrance. You know, in the early 2000s, I was just, it was, I was what I was wearing, man. I was spraying myself probably 35 times with that. <laughs> 
maybe not 35, but a lot, okay? A lot of Aqua de Joe sprays. And yeah, it's because of the attention. Like when that came out, it was just insane. Back in the day, if you would have told me that that has some super secret pheromone sauce in there, that doesn't sound good, pheromone sauce. But if you told me that, I would have believed you because the reaction people had was insane. So yeah, it's still selling. A lot of it's probably people that are reliving their glory years. Number four on Fragrantica, Sauvage, Dior Sauvage, the Eau de Toilette. Don't need much of a, an introduction for that, do we? One of the best selling fragrances ever since it came out, heavy on the Ambroxan. It's a metallic feel, pepper, lavender, citrus, great performance, versatility, compliment factor, the whole thing. That's why it sells so well. And it doesn't hurt that it has the Dior name behind it. So number four, you might think it should be higher, but number four. At Macy's, number four, why Eau de Parfum from Yves Saint Laurent? So the YSL competitor to Dior Sauvage. And why Eau de Parfum does the same thing Sauvage does in terms of the wearability, like when you would spray that on pretty much the same times. A more prominent apple instead of citrus. I mean, it does have citrus, why Eau de Parfum, but apple becomes more prominent there than the citrus. Uh, amber woods in the base, bit of sage, really good stuff. Number three on Fragrantica, Aqua de Joe Profumo. That is the choice, the creme de la creme, apparently, of Aqua de Joe's for the fragrance community. It's the most popular one. So Profumo takes that Aqua de Joe DNA, modernizes it, gives it this bit of incense, which does give it more wearability in seasons like fall than maybe you would expect from the original. Number three at Macy's, Eros. Yep, Versace Eros, the EDT. So Eros makes the top 10 both on Fragrantica and Macy's, which is really interesting in a way because when Eros was launched, I can still remember a lot of people not really being sold on it. At least, you know, people that were talking about it online, they were saying, ah, it's really not that special, just kind of sweet and boring. And yet over years, it has established itself as Versace's most successful fragrance, which also explains why most all of what Versace does, at least lately, is Eros flankers. Seems to be what they're concentrating on. Number two on Fragrantica, Club de Nuit Intense Man from Armoff. And yeah, you're not gonna find that at Macy's. Of course, Club de Nuit Intense Man, the most popular clone of Crete Aventus. Basically, if you want something Aventus-y, but you don't wanna spend a whole lot of money, you just get the good old Armoff with that classy, classy bottle design. <sighs> The masterpiece. It should be in the Louvre. So Club de Nuit Intense Man, number two on Fragrantica. What could be number two at Macy's? Well, not really a surprise. I'm pretty sure if you think about it, you'll know what the number one and two bestsellers at Macy's are. You may not know which one is which, but you know which fragrances they're going to be. So number two, as of this video, is actually Dior Sauvage. Yep, Dior Sauvage Eau de Toilette. So number two bestseller right now on Macy's, number four most popular on Fragrantica. And in case I didn't make this clear, I'm sorting by most popular of all time on Fragrantica. So it is not exactly apples to apples because there will be fragrances on here, obviously, that came out like Dior Homme Intense over a decade ago, which were not going to be uh, sold right now on Macy's or, you know, fragrances like Terre d'Hermes that were very popular, but, you know, they came out a long time ago and now they've fallen in popularity. So, so number two, Sauvage Eau de Toilette. Number one most popular fragrance for men on Fragrantica ever. Creed Aventus. Not a surprise. We all know that one, right? Yeah, everybody knows that one. Pineapple, birch, vanilla, musk, bergamot, blah, blah, blah. We all know the notes. We all know the whole thing. Batch variations, sometimes smoky, sometimes fruity, sometimes both. Aventus, number one. Number one bestseller on Macy's, Blue de Chanel. Yep, Blue de Chanel, Eau de Parfum. Blue de Chanel and Sauvage are constantly at war to be the number one best-selling fragrance. They both want all the money. So you just saw Dior come out with Sauvage Elixir not that long ago. There hasn't been a new Blue de Chanel for a little bit. Will it be Blue de Chanel Elixir or Blue de Chanel Absolute? Who knows? But you gotta think they're coming out with something. They're gonna go ahead and sell it for 200 friggin' dollars or something. But yeah, number one, Blue de Chanel Eau de Parfum. <laughs> Not a surprise, really. I mean, Blue de Chanel Eau de Parfum is a, a sick fragrance. If you're just talking versatility, class, the, the whole nine yards as far as blue scents go. Plus, it's the Chanel name. I mean, that carries a lot of a lot of gravitas. So there we go, guys. A look at the top 10 most popular 
according to the community on Fragrantica versus the actual top 10 bestsellers right now on Macy's and how they differ. Uh, interestingly, a lot of those fragrances that get crapped on on Fragrantica end up being the fragrances that average everyday people want to wear, which maybe is not a huge surprise because your average person that signs up for an account on Fragrantica is gonna be uh, more invested in fragrances than just Joe Blow who, who goes to Macy's and is like, that smells nice, I'll take it. All right guys, it's gonna do it for me. Thanks for hanging with me. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there. See you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.